Hey, thank you for being a part. We're in uh, Isaiah chapter 14 today. Rudy and I are here. I'm going to read some scripture about uh, the king of Babylon, who is a snapshot picture of the evil one. And then I'm going to turn to my left and have Rudy get started. So in verse 12, how you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of the dawn. How you're cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I'll ascend to the heavens. I'll raise my throne above the stars of God. I'll sit in the mount of the assembly and on the heights of Zephon. I'll ascend to the tops of the clouds. I'll make myself like the most high. That's what he said. Here's what God says. But you're brought down to Sheol, to the depths of the pit. Those who see you will stare at you and ponder over you. Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms? who made the world like a desert overthrow its cities, who would not let his prisoners go home. That is uh, quite a description of a mental process of the evil one. And that he could be just like God. Uh, the thing is, is when you think about God, he actually wants everything alive and beautiful and interacting well together. The evil one doesn't want to make a different kind of world. He wants a world with nothing left in it, not even a blade of grass. Mm -hmm. And uh, the stark difference between the creator of the universe and the one that thinks that he can be just like God. You know, yesterday we were talking about the Exodus and how God used Egypt and Joseph actually, uh, his prophecy to create the first superpower of the world. Uh, but the interesting thing is, is that the night before they crossed the Red Sea, they came to a big plain. Uh, it seems as though they were wandering around and they were aimlessly going nowhere. And the Egyptian armies right behind them, all the chariots and the horses and you know, they come along this play, this big plain that two or three million people are in, and the Red Sea's in front of them, and the Egyptian army's behind them, and the Lord, it, the Lord tells us that he moves from the front that was leading them to be their rear guard. But the interesting thing is, the place that they landed at was called Phi Hathoroth, and Phi Hathoroth actually means the opening of a snake. Uh, the adder's home and its exit point. And then there was two rock formations in it. One was called uh, Baal Safan, and the other one was called Migdal. And Migdal actually in Hebrew means obelisk or high place. Baal Safan means master of the north. And that's exactly the phraseologies that used in Isaiah, 700 years later, that he would ascend Safan, which is straight up, that he would take God's throne. But then God's answer to him, you will be thrown down, uh, never to be seen again, ultimately, is what we know is, his, is the evil one's future. But that actually doesn't happen until the end of the millennium reign, which Again, it's another world war, which is uh, the phrase that is used for these wars uh, is the day of the Lord. And when we read the phraseology day of the Lord, that's what we need to be looking at. Our best window to understand that is to look at the Exodus because that was an echo of what the day of the Lord ultimately will be. Right. Thank you. Just to make this very practical for our lives, whenever we are operating in pride and arrogance, we are connected with the evil one who will be thrown down. And he wants you, he wants to eat your soul. Right. Uh, this is not a, this is the most malevolent thing you can think about. Right. So. Uh, the thing is, is that 
the point of free will is when we choose our will over God's and it happens within our hearts. Right. We all have we all have this problem. Right. I have it hundreds of times a day. Uh, but there again, I've said before, Josh Monk is always in my head. And to do the next right thing is how you turn this around. Right. And that's you're never going to be perfect at this. You only get starting on the right path sooner because of your own experience. Right. Very true. And the way I respond to it is I say the most arrogant thing I can do is to tell God no when he's telling me to do something. To say, God, I know better than you. And I'm not trying to ascend above God like Satan. But in my heart, when I say no to God, I'm doing just that. Yes. That's a warning. And that is to be destroyed. And I'm like Rudy. I do this way too often. Thank God for mercy. We said a moment ago while we were drinking some coffee, thank God for his grace, otherwise we'd both be toast. Uh, let's look at this passage. There's a lot more in it than Rudy and I had time to get into. Uh, thank you so much for being a part. Tomorrow we're going to see you around chapter 15. God bless you. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.